What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here. So this week I've put out three different videos on how to stun every type of champion. So if you watch those videos, this one will have nothing new for you. This is just a comprehensive video showing how to stun all three champion types in one video in case people are curious of how to deal with every single champion in every single way. That being said, this video series took a ton of time and effort, so if you learned something from it, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. As I mentioned in the other videos, in Lightfall, Bungie made it so that our subclass verbs can stun champions, so that opens up a ton of build crafting options and build flexibility like we have never had before. A lot of people used to complain about how restrictive loadouts were in content with champions, but with these changes, that barely matters anymore. We have tons of exotic weapons and armor pieces, abilities, and even weapon perks that can handle champions now. So in this video, I'm going to be detailing everything that you can use to deal with any type of champion. So sit back and relax and get ready for 40 minutes of straight info. We will be starting with Barrier Champs. If we hover over the anti-barrier icon on the character menu, it shows all the ways to stun a barrier champion. So from our subclass verbs, we have Volatile Rounds tied to Void, Unraveling Rounds tied to Strand, and Radiant tied to Solar. This will be broken up into four main sections, Exotic Weapons, Exotic Armor, Weapon Perks that Activate Subclass Verbs, and Abilities. We will start with exotic weapons, beginning in the kinetic slot and working our way down. So first we have a weapon that was so good it actually had to be nerfed and that is Arbalist. This thing has disruption break built in and is in the kinetic slot so it can proc disruption break for itself. It also one shots any barrier shield no matter your light level so it is highly effective at breaking barrier shields and it reloads itself when you do so. This weapon is an absolute powerhouse. Speaking of very strong weapons, we have a weapon that was so shit that it actually had to be drastically buffed. I'm talking about Wishender. This thing got intrinsic anti-barrier last year and it jumped to the top of the Grandmaster meta. I'm not kidding, it went from never being used to being an absolute go-to. On a perfect draw, it too can one-shot barrier shields and Grandmaster content. But unlike Arbalist, it doesn't require special ammo. It also does a ton of body shot damage and overpenetrates targets. This is huge because it can one-shot red bars even in GMs, so it is great for ad clear. And the overpenetration of the arrows causes 3 hits in 1, which helps you charge your super extremely quickly. It's just an all-around monster of a weapon. And finally, we have the newly added Pulse Rifle Revision Zero. This Pulse Rifle just got a buff to its 2 burst fire mode of 75%, and Pulse Rifles just received a 20% damage buff, so this thing is now a monster. On top of all that, its Sniper Shots just got a 25% damage buff, so this thing now hits like a truck. Level it up and craft the version you want because this thing is nasty. And speaking of crafting it, unfortunately you will have to wait till season 22 in the fall to get your hands on it if you don't have it already. Onto the energy slot we have the OG anti-barrier weapon Ariana's Vow. This thing is still strong, but it is overshadowed by other options these days. It's a relic of a bygone era of destiny when we had a much more strict sandbox. That being said, it did just receive a 20% buff with the recent mid-season update buffing all hand cannons by 20%, and it still destroys on Hunter with Lucky Pants. I actually used that combo in the Warden of Nothing GM right before Lightfall just for fun. So it is still a decent option, and it has really good ammo economy. One thing I want to note too is the background footage for Ariana's Vow and Revision Zero was all before the buffs were implemented. And finally, we have the Lament Sword. This thing absolutely shreds and it's one of my favorite weapons in the game. It has great ammo economy and deals huge damage. It also heals you when you deal damage which is a big deal when you're using an aggro weapon like a sword and high end content. Sadly, its swings do not penetrate cabal shields for some reason, hopefully Bungie fixes that one day. Also, you must use the revved attack to break a barrier shield, regular swings won't do it. So that is going to be it for the exotics that can stun barrier champions, so now let's check out exotic armor pieces. We only have 3 and 2 aren't very good. First up is the second chance gauntlets for titan. This gives you 2 shield throws and your shields can stun barrier champs. I assume 1 shield is all it takes even in gms to stun a barrier but I haven't tested that. It did only take 1 shield throw in my testing but the lost sector was void burn that day. Either way I hope it is just 1 shield regardless of the difficulty because this option kinda sucks in my opinion regardless because the shield throw has some pretty slow travel time and that will allow the barrier to heal up. So if you're using this exotic at a distance, you either have to time it perfectly, or the barrier is going to regen some health. Next we have the exotic warlock boots Reign of Fire, which can give you Radiant when you get a kill with a fusion rifle or linear fusion rifle. 
and being Radiant will give you anti-barrier rounds on any weapons that you don't already have an anti-champion mod equipped. Next we have the Hunter Chess Piece, Gerfalcon's Hauberk. This exotic gives your weapons volatile rounds after you come out of invisibility, and hunters have a ton of ways to go invis, so you basically have volatile rounds on demand. So as long as you have a void weapon on, you can always be ready to stun a barrier champ. So next we have abilities, and unlike Overload and Unstoppable, Anti-Barrier doesn't have a lot of abilities that can break its shields. You really only have a few. The Fragment Echo of Instability where getting a grenade kill gives you volatile rounds, though this is pretty inconsistent to get to proc when you need it, but would maybe work okay on a Controverse Hold Warlock. Next we have the Strand Fragment Thread of Propagation which gives you unraveling rounds for getting a powered melee kill. This is probably even more inconsistent. You have to get a powered melee kill right before stunning a barrier champ as you can only have unraveling rounds for about 7 seconds. So if you don't have a powered melee charged and some weak adds around, you're screwed. Additionally, in the background footage, I have overload auto rifle on from the artifact and you can see that unraveling rounds don't work if it already has overload. My auto rifle shots bounce off but my machine gun is able to stun. Overall, I don't recommend this option. And lastly we have Radiant. Ember of Torches will give you Radiant for dealing damage with a charged melee. What's so great about this is that you don't need a kill, so this is much easier to proc, especially on Titan with the throwing hammer. You can also use an acrobat dodge on Hunter, which would also be a consistent way to get Radiant. So Radiant is by far the best option here. Though this season, Volatile Rounds isn't terrible either thanks to the artifact perk Volatile Flow. So say you didn't want to run Ember of Torches. If you're on Hunter, you can actually run the Lightweight Knife. This will make you Radiant if you get a Precision Hit, so you could throw a knife at the AB right before it shields, and then you will be Radiant to break the shield. And finally, we have only one super that can stun a Barrier Champ, and that is the Well of Radiance. I tested every combination of Golden Gun, and nothing was able to proc a Barrier Shield. So now we have to talk about things that kind of work, because some of these strats can be quite effective. No, they do not pierce a barrier shield, but what they do is stop a barrier champ from shielding entirely. Any stasis freeze is really good at this, so something like conditional finality that can instantly freeze a barrier is really good for preventing them from shielding. Chill clip and cold steel will apply slow first, so they may be able to shield before you get the freeze, but it is certainly doable. Any exotic that can freeze, so something like Winterbite could certainly be used. The new Titan Helmet, Cadmus Ridge, Lance Cap. There are many options. The trick is practice and getting the timing right. A far easier method for prevention though is Suspend from Strand. Suspend is insanely effective and renders barrier champs pretty much useless. I highly recommend it. If you have content with unstoppables and barriers, you just need a low cooldown on your shackle grenade and you can basically keep suspending a barrier champ over and over again. So again, those are methods that kind of work. No, they're not technically anti-barrier because they don't pierce the shield, but they do allow you to kill a barrier champion without it putting up its shield. And these methods can be extremely viable if you craft your build in the right way. Armin GT soloed the Proving Grounds GM with no barrier weapon equipped, just Stasis Titan with the exotic helmet and he also soloed Mars Battleground GM on a Strand Titan with no anti-barrier. So yes, it is very effective. So finally, that brings us to things that don't work but should. For this list, we only have one. Sadly, that is Collective Obligation. You are supposed to be able to leech Suppression, Weaken, and Volatile with this weapon. But when you leech Volatile, it doesn't apply Volatile rounds to the gun. It would be really nice if it did because you could pretty much have Volatile rounds on demand. I'm not sure if this is intended or not, but hopefully Bungie fixes it. And then, as always, there are the seasonal artifact mods that you can use. This season we have anti-barrier pulse rifle and anti-barrier sidearm, both of which are pretty good options. And one thing I want to note is that if you do have a pulse rifle with adaptive munitions, that perk does work on barrier shields. Anyways, that is it for the list of every way to stun an anti-barrier champion in Lightfall. So next up, we'll take a look at unstoppable champions. If we hover over the unstoppable icon on the character menu, it shows all the ways to stun an unstoppable. So from our subclass verbs, we have the blind effect from arc, the ignition effect from solar, the shatter effect from stasis, and the suspend effect from strand. We also have gear with unstoppable traits, certain weapon perks, and artifact mods. We'll start with exotic weapons. Some have intrinsic unstoppable built in. This means that they can always stun a champion. We'll start in the kinetic slot and work our way down. So first up is Bastion. Simply charge up the shot and when you land your burst it will stun an unstoppable. 
Next, we have Malfeasance. Shooting an enemy will infect it with a taken slug. Once you shoot five slugs, the slugs will detonate and stun an unstoppable. This pairs extremely well with Lucky Pants on Hunter, which buffs hand cannon damage. Additionally, if multiple teammates use this weapon, you will stun an unstoppable after five total shots. So one teammate can shoot two shots and you can shoot another three, and this will cause the detonations to go off and stun the champion. Next, we have the exotic sidearm, Devil's Ruin. This one has a charged up, high powered laser similar to charging a fusion rifle. When you shoot the beam, it will stun an unstoppable. Next, we have the absolute champion killer, the Leviathan's Breath. This thing has gotten a few buffs over the years, and now it is very strong. It now does extra damage to champions, has archer's tempo when you have the catalyst, as well as holding more ammo, and perfect draws apply volatile. Trust me, this thing slaps. And as long as you cock it back the entire way, then landing the arrow will stun an unstoppable. Additionally, it does initial impact damage and a delayed detonation so that you don't miss out on damage from the first shot, which was a big detriment to using this weapon when it first launched, because unstoppables take 70% less damage until they are stunned. And that is it for the weapons with intrinsic stunning capabilities, but we have a lot more that take advantage of subclass verbs that we talked about earlier. So we use these weapons to take advantage of shatter, ignite, and blind. The new raid shotgun conditional finality can actually freeze and ignite. So regardless if you have one or two in the mag, as long as you land your pellets, you will be able to stun an unstoppable. Egger's scepter with the catalyst has will given form which uses your super and absolutely shreds. This will slow and freeze targets over and over, allowing you to melt an unstoppable. Additionally, if you shoot enemies next to an unstoppable, it will freeze it, and then you can shatter the freeze to stun it. This is less reliable though, as you need enemies around the target. We have the Cryosthesia 77k sidearm. When you get a regular kill, you have a liquid nitrogen shot ready. Hold reload to charge a shot, and you will shoot a freezing burst that can freeze the champ. Then simply shatter the ice to stun it. Once again, this can be somewhat unreliable if you don't have an enemy around to get a kill on to proc the freeze shot. Touch of Malice is capable of stunning an unstoppable, so long as you land some crits first. Landing crits allows you to shoot a blight wave, and this will stun the unstoppable. It also weakens the enemy to damage from Weapons of Sorrow, so once it's stunned, you can just lay into it with Touch of Malice, though you may die because of the damage you take. The last one in the kinetic slot is the new Stasis Bow Vergless Curve. As long as you have gotten at least one kill with it, you will have a hail barrage that you can hip fire to form stasis crystals and freeze the champ. And then, like with all freeze, just shatter it and it will stun. Moving on to the energy slot, we have two solar scout rifles. The first and more reliable one for stuns is the Polaris Lance. Landing consecutive crits will cause a solar explosion. You can land these pretty rapidly, and you never have to reload if they are crits. This will cause multiple explosions to stack up Scorch, and eventually cause the champion to ignite and stun. Skyburner's Oath works in a similar manner. Shoot the enemy from the hip to stack up Scorch stacks. Eventually, with enough stacks, the champion will ignite. Ember of Ashes can be used to apply more Scorch stacks to allow for quicker ignitions, and in my testing, it took one full 20-shot clip with Ember of Ashes on to get an ignition. Speaking of using Ember of Ashes to help with stacks, you can use Prometheus Lens to stack up Scorch on a target and also eventually cause an ignition. This method chews through ammo quite a bit, as it takes about one full mag of 100 shots to get an ignition, but it is a viable option. Sunshot can also apply Scorch, but only through getting kills on targets and spreading the Scorch. It does not apply Scorch directly like it does on Skyburner's Oath or Prometheus Lens, so it is extremely unreliable, but I'm throwing it in here because it is technically possible. Now we move on to the heavy slot. First up we have 1000 voices. It doesn't state it on the weapon, but this weapon now applies Scorch. You can get a stun if you land the entire beam without Ember of Ashes, but if you want ease of use and consistent stuns, then you will want to run Ember of Ashes to make it a little more forgiving and always get the stun on your first beam so you don't waste a bunch of ammo. That being said, 1k can only hold 7 shots and your whole first shot is doing drastically reduced damage to get the stun, so it's not the best option. Next we have a weapon that no one uses, the Queen Breaker's Bow. This weapon has a slow and fast firing mode, and either one can stun a champion. Though for ammo economy purposes, I would run the slow firing high damaging round if you decide to use this. Next we have another arc heavy weapon that causes blind, and that is Grand Overture. This weapon only blinds in its missile form, but you just need to land one regular shot to have a missile ready, and then you can shoot the missile and stun a champion. 
pro tip here, in watching my footage back, you want to tap fire your missiles so to speak. You just want to shoot one off to get the stun, and then unleash the volley. If you just hold down the trigger, a lot of your shots will count for the 70% less damage because it takes a bit for the champ to actually be stunned and lose its damage resistance. So if you have a whole volley of 20, shoot as few as possible for the stun, and then launch your missiles all at once once it is clearly stunned, and it will delete the champ. Especially next season, when Arc Surge is likely to return. Next we have Two-Tailed Fox. This weapon can apply Scorch to targets. It takes two rockets to ignite a target, but I do not recommend stunning an unstop with this. You will waste two rockets minimum just getting the stun, and sometimes they may even dodge your shot. And the Scorch will wear off because this weapon has a slow rate of fire. So yes, it can stun, but no, I don't recommend it. We have a total meme weapon next in the Salvation's Grip. This weapon is trash, but it can be used to freeze targets, meaning it is capable of stunning unstoppables. And lastly, that brings us to the new exotic glaive, Winter Bite. If you have ammo loaded in this weapon, then melee damage will be increased and it will apply slow stacks. One combo usually applies enough slow to freeze, and then once you shatter, it will stun the champ. The glaive projectile also will freeze targets and deals pretty good damage. Lastly, it also works with the medieval champion perk to give glaives unstoppable, just like a regular energy glaive. And that is it for the exotic weapons that can stun unstoppable champions. Next, let's look at the exotic armor. The most reliable option is probably Athras' Embrace, as you just need to hit crits on the unstop beforehand to charge up your strengthened heavy knife. And you can use Gambler's Dodge to pretty much always have a throwing knife charged and ready. Then just hit the champ with your strengthened knife and you will stun it. The next option is the Titan chest piece Horfrost Z, which turns your Titan Barricade into an Ice Shield. The stasis crystals can freeze the champ just like a glacier grenade. Next is another set of hunter gloves, the Caliban's Hand. I included it here because it is kind of all about getting ignitions, and normally the proximity knife does not apply scorch, but it does when you wear these. So you can pretty reliably get an ignition off if you're wearing these. I'm including the Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap on Titan. Technically, it is just Diamond Lance that does the freezing, so you could just file that under an ability stun, but because it can make diamond lances without the diamond lance aspect equipped, I figured I would throw it in on the list. And finally, we have the Dawn Chorus. This doesn't apply more Scorch like Ember of Ashes, but the Scorch you do apply does more damage, so it is great with incandescent weapons. Additionally, if you happen to run Daybreak, then this will allow your Daybreak blades to deal Scorch, which will result in an ignition on a champ. This isn't the greatest to use for unstoppables, as it requires a whole ass super, but it does work. And just like that, we are done with the exotics that can be used to stun unstoppables. We will now look at weapon perks that can stun unstops. These can roll on legendary weapons, so it gives these weapons a built in way to stun champions. By far the best perk in this category is Chill Clip, and by far the best weapon to have this perk on is the Riptide Fusion Rifle from the Crucible. It rolls on a couple other fusions, but Riptide is a rapid fire frame so it can stack the slow faster than the other fusions. It also rolls on a number of other weapons, so keep your eye out for it. In the background gameplay, you can see it can freeze quite quickly. It is super reliable for stunning unstoppables and even overloads. I made a video on this perk if you want more info, but for unstops it is excellent as you just have to land two fusion shots to freeze the champion, then shatter the ice and you're good to go. From the best champ stunning perk to the worst, we technically should include headstone. If you are able to get a crit on an enemy beside an unstop, it would freeze from the crystal and then stun when shattered. However, this situation is extremely rare and I do not recommend it. I included it here just because it technically can work, and this video is detailing every way to stun an unstoppable. Next we have another good perk, Incandescent. This applies Scorch stacks as you defeat enemies. I have actually gotten stuns before with this perk on my crafted fixed odds. Fixed odds can chew through adds and cause a lot of Scorch to spread really quickly, which leads to ignitions. It is craftable, so you can get Enhanced Incandescent to spread even more Scorch. But overall, like I mentioned with Sunshot, this isn't a very reliable way to stun champions, as they need to be surrounded by adds, but it is possible. And that leads us to the last perk, Cold Steel. To the best of my knowledge, this only rolls on the Zephyr Sword from the Dawning Event, but it is actually really good. It applies stacks of slow on heavy or light attacks. As you can see, it just takes a few hits to get the freeze. The downside is, you have to be up close on an unstop to do this, and unstoppable ogres and abominations have a powerful stomp that will probably just kill you. In lower end content though, this could be a great choice. 
So those are all the legendary weapon perks that can stun unstoppables, but for high-end content, I really only recommend Chill Clip. And now that brings us to abilities. To reiterate, the subclass verbs that can stun unstoppables are Shatter, Ignite, Suspend, and Blind. Shatters are caused by destroying a frozen shield and casing the target, so basically anything from the stasis kit that applies slow or can outright freeze will work. And with ignitions, it is a similar story. Anything that applies Scorch will eventually lead to an ignition and a stun, so you'll see lots of Scorch stacking to create an ignition. For Suspend, it is pretty straightforward, anything that suspends the target will stun it. And then lastly Blind, where Blinding and Unstop will stun it. We'll start with all the ways to Stasis Freeze. On Titan, there are quite a few different options. You have Howl of the Storm and Diamond Lance for Aspects. Your melee can be used in combination with other slow applicators to get a freeze. The Titan Behemoth Super can also freeze targets. All the classes can use Cold Snaps and Glacier Grenades for instant freezes, or Dusk Fields to slow over time and eventually get a freeze. On the Warlock, we have the Stasis Turret to apply slow and freeze from Bleak Watcher. We also have the Penumbral Blast Melee, which can instant freeze. And lastly, the Warlock Super is pretty solid for causing shatters. On Hunter, you can stack slow with Withering Blade Melee and the slowing dodge effect from the Stasis Aspect Winter Shroud. I will also include Shatter Dive on the list. It does not apply slow or freeze, but it does shatter a freeze instantly, and technically it is the shatter that does the stunning. The Revenant Super, Silence, and Squall can also stun an unstoppable champion. If you want to see all these ways to slow and freeze an unstoppable in their entirety, I made a video showing you every ability that can stun a champion, so watch that there. But in the interest of saving you time, I will just quickly be detailing what works so that you have that information. Moving on from there, we have Solar Ignitions. Ignitions are caused by stacking up stacks of Scorch. Ember of Ashes allows you to apply more Scorch stacks anytime you deal Scorch damage, so if you are going for an Ignition build, I always recommend this fragment. On Warlock, placing your Well of Radiance down can apply Scorch. Also, both the Incinerator Snap Melees and Celestial Fire can cause stacks of Scorch, with the Incinerator Snap being quite reliable for causing Ignitions if you land the whole melee. Aside from healing grenades, every single grenade can apply stacks of Scorch, the Hunter Tripmine build with Young Ahamkara Spine Gauntlets or the Fusion Grenade Warlock build with Starfire Protocol are great for causing grenade-based ignitions. Sunbracer's Warlock is also very nasty too. On the Hunter, as mentioned, the Proximity Knife can stack Scorch if Caliban's Hand is equipped, but if not, you can use the Weighted Throwing Knife or Knife Trick Melees to stack Scorch. The Aphidia Spathe exotic chess piece is a pretty slept on exotic as it gives you two melee charges and you get both melees back when you dodge if you're running gambler's dodge, so it is great for getting melee based ignitions. For hunter aspects, the gunpowder gamble is capable of stunning unstoppables. All solar supers on every class can technically cause ignitions if you run ember of combustion, where final blows with a solar super cause targets to ignite, so if you are getting kills on adds surrounding an unstoppable, this will stun it. Again, it's a pretty unreliable situation, but it is possible. This will not ignite the champion if you are dealing damage to the champ with your super. It has to get kills beside the champion, causing those enemies to ignite on kill, which will stun the champ. On Titan, the Hammer Strike melee can apply Scorch, as can the Uncharge melee if you have at least one stack of Roaring Flames. Just punch over and over again, and eventually it will ignite. Again though, this is very hard to do in endgame content because you'll probably just get stomped and die. The Soul Invictus Sunspots can also apply Scorch, and lastly the most reliable way to stun on Solar Titan is with the Consecration aspect, where as long as you land your melee, you will cause an ignition. Next we have Suspend. This ability is extremely powerful against all combatants, but it is especially good against Unstoppables because it can stun them. You can run the fragment Thread of Continuity to get longer suspend time, but beware, they will become unstunned even while hanging in the air, so you may have to keep reapplying the stun. The Titan Super is great for applying Suspend. The Dranger's Lash aspect on Titan can stun champs by throwing down your barricade, and the Hunter aspect in Snaring Slam allows you to consume your dodge with an air move that does a dive bomb onto the enemy and ensnares them. This move is as effective as it is stylish. Next we have Blind from Arc. One of the easiest ways to do this is with a Flashbang Grenade. This can be used by any class. For melee options, you have the Seismic Strike Melee on Titan, 
and the disorienting blow on Hunter. Additionally, the Hunter Aspect Lethal Current allows you to blind any jolted target with a melee attack. So you just apply jolt by any means, and then you can regularly melee them. None of the Arc Supers work to blind a target, though I wish Fists of Havoc did just because it would make that super somewhat viable. We also have Spark of Beacons and Spark of Brilliance, both of which are pretty much useless for getting reliable stuns, but they can technically blind unstoppables, so we will include them on the list. So those were all the abilities that we can use to stun champions. As you can see, with it now being tied into our subclasses, it has never been easier to be able to run the loadout that you want to complete Grandmasters, as you could easily beat a GM without any artifact mods now. Speaking of artifact mods, every season we get an artifact with champion stunning mods. This season they are Medieval Champion and Unstoppable Scout. On a primary, all you have to do is aim down sights for a couple seconds and then shoot the Unstoppable with an Unstoppable shot. In the past, we have had things like Unstoppable Shotguns and Unstoppable Grenade Launchers, and this season we have Unstoppable Glaive, via the Medieval Champion mod. So where on primaries you have to aim down sights for a couple seconds, on special weapons it is usually just an instant stun. So let's take a look at things that you think might work, but in my testing I found they do not. First up is Tiku's Divination. I could see this one being reworked in the future, but for now it cannot cause Ignitions to stun a champ. Neither can Hierarchy of Needs or Tommy's Matchbook. When the changes to champion stunning were announced, a lot of people thought blinding grenade launchers would be hugely meta, but Bungie changed blinding grenades to disorienting grenades. So just to be sure, I tested them out, and as you can see, they do not stun. Next, we have the most egregious example, the Hunter Boots Bombardiers. These literally say in the description, Arc Dodge Blinds Targets, and when you do it, you see the little red blind above enemy heads, but it does not cause the champ to stun for some reason. Maybe it is still coated with the old blind effect? I'm really not sure. It also doesn't work with slow effects on overloads, so something weird is going on with them. Hopefully they get them fixed in the future. I also thought more of the Titan melees might work, and the Fist of Havoc super, but at least for now, they do not stun unstoppables. Regardless, as you can see from the infographic I made, we still have a shit ton of ways to stun on stops. But now, let's look at the final champion, Overloads. If we hover over the overload icon on the character menu, it shows all the ways to stun an overload. So from our subclass verbs, we have the jolt effect from arc, the slow effect from stasis, and the suppression effect from void. And then we also have gear with intrinsic overload traits and the seasonal artifact perks. First up, we have exotic weapons. We'll start in the kinetic slot and work our way down. And there are actually no kinetic weapons with intrinsic overload capabilities. So we'll move down to the energy slot and talk about the OG overload stunning weapon, Divinity. This weapon is great for stunning overloads as you only need to land a single shot to apply the stun. Overloads are notorious for jumping around and being annoying to stun. Weapons like autos and SMGs require sustained damage to proc the overload shot, so it can be tough to keep them from regening health. Weapons like autos and SMGs have an overload shot every so many rounds, so you have to lay on the target and hope you don't miss when the overload bullet comes up. This can make it tough to keep them from regening their health. And overload bows require a full draw, and overload minotaurs and captains often blink through your shot which can be very frustrating. But divinity is great for keeping overload rounds on the target to keep them from regening their health. Speaking of overload bows, let's look at the next weapon, Le Monarch. This weapon has overload built into its poison arrow, so it actually doesn't stun on hit, but when the poison is applied. So you need a perfect draw to stun a champ, and there is a slight delay which can be the difference between life and death sometimes. One trick to note is on seasons with overload bow, you can run overload bow and that will apply overload without a perfect draw, which makes it more forgiving. And with the new surge modifiers, it will also apply surge to the bow. Lemon Arc is great for keeping overload stunned, especially at a distance. You can peak shoot and the damage over time from the poison allows you to have some time to dip back behind cover rather than needing to sustain fire like with an auto rifle or SMG. It is great for solo GM play, and I actually used this bow to solo the Glassway GM last season. And lastly, for the weapons with intrinsic stunning capability, we have the ultimate overload stunning machine, Thunderlord. The background gameplay is in a master loss sector without arc burn, and this was before Bungie's latest patch that reduced combat difficulty and enemy health, and it absolutely chews through this champion. I've been using machine guns pretty regularly since Season of the Haunted, and with Lightfall they got a buff to their reserves, so they are the best they've ever been in my opinion. But even still, I have totally been sleeping on Thunderlord until this season, and more specifically, until I saw this thing melt a Master Champion with no Arc Singe. 
When Arc Surge presumably comes back next season, this gun should be high on your radar. I will definitely be using it. Now onto the weapons that can stun thanks to subclass verbs. First in the kinetic slot is the Stasis Exotic Trace Rifle Agger Scepter. This weapon cannot directly stun an overload, but if you kill an enemy near an overload, it will spread slow to the surrounding area, and if that slow hits an overload champion, it will get stunned. Also, if you have the catalyst, then the will given form that drains your super will also apply the slow effect to an enemy. But this does use up your super energy, so it is not the most reliable weapon to use for stuns, especially if there are a lot of overloads to stun like in the Exodus Crash Grandmaster. However, in this mode, it can take out an overload pretty easily. Up next, we have an old favorite of mine, the Void Trace Rifle Ruinous Effigy. I actually love this weapon because it is so unique, and now it can suppress overloads with a big slam dunk attack. The melee from the orb and the life drain do not stun a champ, but if you dunk on a champ, it will apply suppression and stun it. It's pretty cool, but not the best for high-end nightfalls where getting into the fray can often get you killed, and unless you kill the overload in one go, you will not be able to keep it from regening its health after the initial stun, which is true for a lot of these weapons. The problem with overloads is that they regen health over time, so a lot of these intrinsic ways of stunning aren't all that great for solo play because if you can't kill it in one cycle really quickly then it will just regen its health. Anyway, speaking of exotic void trace rifles, the wave splitter is also capable of melting overload champions when it has supercharged battery perk going. Simply collect an orb and now the beam will apply suppression to a target. With void being a seasonal surge and the artifact perk volatile flow applying volatile rounds on orb pickup, this weapon has never been stronger. And the good thing about this is, as long as you have that perk going, then it will continuously apply suppression, which will prevent the overload from gaining its health back. Next we have the Collective Obligation Pulse Rifle from the Vow of the Disciple Raid. This weapon can leech volatile rounds, weaken, and suppression from enemies affected by those debuffs. It can then spread those debuffs to other enemies. So if you or a teammate has a way of suppressing an enemy, say with Shield Bash on Titan or a Suppression Grenade on any class, then you can shoot that suppression round at an overload and stun it. This weapon is already quite strong in the right build, and this interaction just made it even better. And for the last energy weapon, we have the Delicate Tomb Fusion Rifle. When you collect an Ionic Trace, this weapon gets a buff called Tempest Cascade which will jolt targets on hit. Now we move on to the heavy weapons, and I want to start with Two-Tailed Fox first. The Catalyst gives this a third rocket which applies jolt and is capable of stunning an overload but the void rocket it shoots also suppresses, so that can also stun an overload. However, as I mentioned, overload minotaurs like to blink around a lot, and overload captains are notoriously shifty, always teleporting around, and this weapon shoots very slowly, so personally, I hate using it as a means to stun overloads. Overload hobgoblins or chieftains, sure, it can be decent there because they are less mobile, but use at your own risk. If you do get the stun though, this rocket hits very hard. And if it applies Jolt to the target, then you are in luck because it lasts a while and keeps the overload from regening health while the Jolt is applied. Next we have a weapon that is sort of the opposite of Two-Tailed Fox, a heavy weapon that is great at applying the stun, but doesn't do great damage. It is the Darcy Sniper Rifle. Its target acquired perk causes Jolt which will stun the overload. It is a fast firing sniper so it can easily hit an overload at pretty much any distance, but it leaves a lot to be desired in the damage department. Next, we have the new exotic Stasis Glaive Winter Bite. When you have this weapon loaded, melee hits will apply slow which will stun an overload. However, melee based options are not the best in high end nightfalls, but you could still make it work if you know what you are doing, as the glaive blocks keep you from dying to pretty much anything. Also, the projectile that it shoots pretty much always applies freeze and not slow, so the melee is the only way I was able to stun an overload. And finally, we have an extremely strong weapon in the Tractor Cannon. This not only suppresses an overload and stuns it, but it also applies a 30% weakened debuff to it. It's very good with the right builds. And that is it for the exotic weapons that can stun overloads. Now let's move to the exotic armor. First we have the Icefall Mantle Exotic Titan Arms. These give you an overshield in place of your barricade. I tested these on a non-stasis subclass and was not able to get a stun, but when you run stasis it emits a slowing field that can stun overloads. However, the radius on this slow wave is very small, so you have to pretty much be right next to the overload. So it's not great for higher end content in my opinion. Next we have another stasis based titan exotic, the Horfrost Z chest piece. 
This exotic turns your barricade into stasis crystals. These crystals will freeze enemies, but they seem to slow them first, resulting in a stun. Again, not the best option to use, but it can stun an overload. Finally, we have the best exotic for stunning overloads, the Secant Filaments. This will allow almost any weapon to stun overloads, including things like rocket launchers. It won't work with exotics that have intrinsic stunning capabilities like the Lament with built-in anti-barrier, and it is bugged it seems with the Medieval Champion Artifact mod, but it does seem to work on pretty much everything else. In the background footage, I have an unstoppable scout on, and when I am in my empowering rift, it allows me to shoot overload rounds with my scout rifle. Very cool. This does not work with healing rifts, and it says it grants devour, but that is only when you are running a void subclass sadly. But overall, a great exotic piece for dealing with overloads. Next, let's take a look at some weapon perks that can stun overloads, starting with my favorite, Chill Clip. Chill Clip applies slow on the top half of the magazine. So in a breach loaded grenade launcher, every grenade will apply slow, allowing you to stun overloads easily with one shot from the lingering dread. It also works very well on fusion rifles with Chill Clip, specifically the Riptide. Another fun perk that applies slow is the Cold Steel perk on the Zephyr Sword from the Dawning. It can apply slow on light or heavy attacks. I absolutely love swords, so this is like having Overload Sword built into your legendary sword. And finally, we have the Arc perk Volt Shot. Reloading after a kill will allow your next shot to apply Jolt. This rolls on the Sidearm and Scout Rifle from Season of the Plunder, the new Arc Neomina Fusion Rifle and Pulse Rifle, among a few other weapons. These are all great options for stunning overloads. Jolt is a very strong method for stunning them as it seems to last longer than suppression or slow, and it can reproc itself by doing damage. As mentioned earlier, when an overload champion is jolted, it will not regen its health, and in legend content, the jolt actually lasts long enough to get a second stun off. However, you cannot proc a second stun on master and grandmaster overloads because their stun cooldown lasts longer. So it's a pretty deadly option to use, and it's an amazing option considering it can roll on legendary weapons. So that's it for weapon perks, let's move on to abilities. So as mentioned before, the abilities that can stun overloads are suppression, jolt, and slow. Bleak Watcher is great as it supplies slow for a long time, but if many enemies are around, your turret may target other enemies instead of the overload. Regardless, it is still a fairly strong option. Other effective methods in the stasis kit include Winter Shroud, the aspect on Hunter that allows your dodge to slow enemies, Duskfield Grenades apply slow over a pretty long period, the Hunter Withering Blade and Titan Shiver Strike are also capable of applying slow, the Titan and Hunter Supers can also apply slow. So overall, stasis can actually be quite effective at dealing with overloads now. For Void, we only have a few abilities that work. The Shield Bash Melee on Titan is one way to stun, and suppression grenades can also work. Both hunter tethers will stun an overload, and interestingly, the shield bash melee while in a sentinel super will not stun an overload. Just the shield bash melee ability. And finally, that brings us to jolt. The fragment spark of shock allows our grenades to apply jolt to targets which will stun overloads. This works with any type of grenade. I did a full breakdown of all the abilities that can stun every champion, so if you want to see literally every arc grenade stun an overload, check out that video. But in the interest of saving time, I'll just be going over the abilities that work more quickly here. The Warlock Aspect Lightning Surge will allow your melee ability to jolt enemies, and two of the Hunter Aspects will also apply jolt. Lethal Current will allow your melee to apply jolt after dodging, and Tempest Strike turns your melee ability into an AoE uppercut that can also apply Jolt. Additionally, both Hunter Supers can apply Jolt. The Gathering Storm Super is very consistent for applying it, where with Arc Staff, it seems you have to be up close to the enemy to apply the Jolt. The Heavy Attack was more consistent for me, so my recommendations would be do a Heavy Attack to stun, and then follow up with the Light Light Heavy combo attacks. As you can see in the testing, Jolt was very strong for dealing with overloads. But one problem with Jolt is it is not always immediate, which can sometimes get you killed, or cause you to miss a stun if the enemy gets away from a Jolt grenade too fast or something which can be very frustrating. It can be slightly inconsistent. If you watch my video on exotic second stun champions, you'll know the bombardiers are pretty much useless when it comes to stunning champs. So even though it says when running a void or stasis subclass that your bomb from the bombardiers will apply slow or suppression, 
Yes, it does apply that, but it does not stun Overload Champions for some reason. This is very unfortunate and hopefully Bungie fixes this. Another weapon perk that I tested was Flash Counter. Melee blocked immediately after guarding Disorients and weakens the attacker. This one also does not work. Disorient is not a 3.0 verb, and it also does not work on disorienting grenades on GLs. And lastly, we have the Warlock Melee Chain Lightning. It says it applies Jolt, but it does not show Jolt as a subclass verb in the menu, and it does not stun overloads. Personally, I think it should because it does apply Jolt, as you can see here on Carl, so I'm not sure what is up with that. But I just wanted to point out that it does not work. I wouldn't mind seeing one of the Titan Melees applied Jolt, but that might be a little too strong. Maybe they can make Thunderclap applied Jolt with the Point Contact Cannon Brace. Who knows, but that's it for stuff that doesn't work. And finally, that brings us to Artifact Mods. The Artifact Mods this season are Overload Bow and Overload Auto, meaning ARs and SMGs can stun Overloads. These are honestly two of the best Artifact Mods for Overloads. Overload Bow must be drawn back fully to proc an Overload Shot, but it does not need to be a perfect draw. An overload auto requires sustained fire and every few bullets you will get an overload shot. In the past we have had overload hand cannon which procs on like every fourth hand cannon shot which is not great, but explosive or time payload could make it proc every two shots. And you probably already know this, but Osseo Strigo with overload SMG is pretty much a cheat code. It's insanely strong. Anyways, that is going to do it for every way to stun a champion in Destiny 2 since Lightfall. I'm sure more exotics will be added in the future, but this will hopefully serve as the ultimate champion stunning guide for years to come. If you made it this far, then you are amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something. As always, happy champion stunning, and take care.